Well, the finance minister Ntlantla Nene delivering his medium-term budget policy statement earlier today, and it paints a picture of a country stuck between, yes, a rock and a hard place. Dwindling growth, worrying about the current account deficit and a lack of revenue. Shouldn't South African companies beginning to begin to step up to the plate and start investing in this economy to spur activity? to give us the growth we need. It's contentious, but that's why we've got two top guests to discuss it this evening. This is The Moneymakers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight we ask whether or not the 700 billion sitting in corporate deposits in South African banks should be deployed for the economy. Deployed, it's a scary word. Joining me to try to answer this complicated question is the SACI president, Vusi Kumalo, and Wayne McCurry from Momentum Wealth. Wayne McCurry, Firstly, the yes. 700 billion rand, which the Reserve Bank is, says is tied up in lazy, big, fat, bloated corporate balance sheets. I added some of the adjectives yeah, myself, you understand. Sure the reserve <laughs> <bank> <laughs> the um, could be better used. <clears throat> it could be, but you must understand, companies and corporates will only react to where they perceive they can make money, or where they perceive there's growing current demand or expected future demand. So if the whole economy starts to do well and there's more jobs created, then you get almost a knock-on effect when that money is reinvested. Or if commodity prices double, then they build new mines. But at the moment, consumer expenditure looks poor and the mining sector, certainly in South Africa, looks poor. And in fact, the whole of Africa looks quite poor with depressed commodity prices. So quite frankly, there's no need, there's no urgency for companies to spend this money and that's why they're not spending it. They won't spend it to boost further demand. They are, by and large, reactive. They will mm. react to a situation far more so than cause a future demand or a future situation. But do we not need a catalyst, Wiskomala? Do we not need something to trigger another growth spurt? The trouble is, I suppose, if the companies spend the money on their balance sheet and it doesn't work, well, then we're doubly doomed. Certainly. Uh, it's quite important uh, to acknowledge the fact that uh, there is a notion of supply and demand. At this point in time, the demand is less than the supply. So therefore, there is no real uh, good reason why the money should be spent or should be invested. Because uh, if that investment uh, doesn't get the lesser returns, it becomes an issue. Mm. On the contrary, from a circuit perspective, it's quite important to acknowledge that it's a global phenomenon, that uh, SMMEs are the core to wealth creation, to job creation, to economic growth. Rather, corporate uh, South Africa should be looking at uh, programs like um, supplier chain uh, development programs that will spread the economic activity at the SME level that will have a growth potential that will lead to spreading the economic activity creating a job opportunities. It, it sounds like a page from the triple B mm -hmm. codes and companies are being forced and obliged to do that precisely so that they can tick the boxes that they mm -hmm. require to do to mm -hmm. comply with the triple B E codes. If companies spent a bit of that 700 billion rand cash pile on stimulating small business, would that be a public service? It will certainly help, Bruce, but you know, I did a study a week or two ago going back as far as I could find economic data. And every single boost in the South African economy and every single downturn in the South African economy for the last 50 years is caused by the commodity cycle. We are a commodity producer and our fortunes or our downfalls are intricately and intimately related to the commodity cycle. So, I mean, we can help a little bit. The government can help a little bit because sometimes it seems the government doesn't even want to help. But unless commodity prices turn up, unless iron ore goes back to $100 and coal goes up, etc., we are just going to sit in this low growth scenario with, unfortunately, quite frankly, virtually nothing we can do about it short term. But as anybody who's been, ever been addicted to anything will tell you, you've got to break a bad habit. Yes. South and Africa's bad habit is yeah. commodity dependency. And everyone's been trying to yeah. do this for donkeys and donkeys yeah. years. You know, beneficiation, try and add value to the stuff you export. But unfortunately, we've actually gone backwards in the last 20 years because up until the new South Africa, our manufacturing industry was heavily protected. And there's, in fact, was the second most heavily protected country in the world after Tibet when you look at how many, how many tariff lines we had and how much protection we had. 
And unfortunately, when the barriers were brought down, yeah. we had very positive spin-off. We got lower inflation, but we also had very negative spin-off. Quite frankly, our companies just couldn't compete. So manufacturing nowadays in South Africa, if you exclude the protected industries, motor cars, etc., which are still heavily yeah. protected, it virtually doesn't exist. Yeah, it, it's a devastating scenario that we find ourselves in, Busi. How do can the business sector, you talk about going downstream and, and helping micro enterprises, small businesses, getting those supply chains working. Fine, that takes the first 10 billion, or oh, we've got another 690 billion rand to go, um, in terms of what corporates could do with the money that is trapped on balance sheets. I think we're undermining the research that uh, has, uh, has, uh, has, uh, has, uh, has shared with us in terms of anywhere in the world, the growth of any economy is on the basis of the SMEs. To that extent, the SAC at our annual convention, we put forth uh, one of the motions in terms of the Bill of Rights, which basically looks at uh, how do we enhance, improve, and support the growth of SMEs, because that becomes the heart and soul of the prospective economic growth of this country. Okay, it is the heart and soul of, the gr of growth in the, in the country, but still, Wayne McCurry, I, I almost feel as though corporate South Africa, uh, there, there's a suggestion that corporate South Africa is not sufficiently patriotic. Well, look, of course that suggestion would come forward, but corporate South Africa, you know, capitalism and money is a terrible thing. It votes with its feet. It goes to where it can earn its highest return. And if it looks back and says, well, I can earn a higher return somewhere else. It's going there. Not always, it doesn't always work out. Ask anyone who's gone into Nigeria and Angola in the last while whether they're happy with their investment. You're mm. probably going to see no as an answer. But money will vote with its feet. It will go to where you can earn the biggest return. And at the moment with the South African economic outlook doesn't look good. Look, there is some light in the horizon, but it's longer term. I'm very favorable about seriously strong African growth once we... Yeah out of the slump in commodities and we are ideally positioned for that but that's not a one or two year fix it's a it's really a decade mm -hmm. if not longer so there is some hope you know south africans the our economy is incredibly resilient and we will survive and we won't we won't sort of plummet into total catastrophe but very shorter term i just can't see a catalyst mm -hmm. very often the south koreans are held up of course as a great example of mm -hmm. what to do south korea instituted an anti-cash hoarding tax law that has seen investment increase um should we should I, i've got this horrible feeling that somewhere in the background abraham patel and rob davies are Just sitting about this, um yeah. with a with a tablecloth across the table there's a crystal ball between them and they're plotting legislation to oblige big companies to invest. Would that be a, a good or a bad idea from your perspective? It would be a good idea, it, good for the country, good for the investors themselves, but fundamentally it, what precipitates that would be creating an environment where invest, investment will reign and that will have knock-on effects that will be positive for the economic growth of the country. Busi says we must yeah. force companies to invest. Look, look. It's something the environment that yeah. I yeah. could no, 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 but right now in this environment, <laughs> yes. if it's, we, yeah. Yeah. it's something that's actually I've been thinking about for a while now. What we short of in South Africa is a fully blown crisis. Now let me explain that a little mm -hmm. bit. Maybe we're at the start of it now. Maybe we're a quarter of the way into it. But you only truly get proper, decisive, correct decisions made during a crisis. People don't make tough decisions when there's not a crisis around. So maybe we actually need a crisis. Now, I don't disagree with what Vuzi said, but it's got to be an overall package. It's, you know, we've got to literally have an economic Odessa where the government sits and says, right, these following laws that inhibit growth, we're going to scrap. Yeah. We're going to scale it down. Our expenditure in these particular areas is, uh, is, is not fruitful, wasteful. We're going to cut that back. We are going to privatize SAA, we're going to get it out, we're going to get post office out, we're going to... It, so it's actually, quite frankly, it actually boils down to, at the end of the day, ideology. Yeah. It's actually, what we're actually sitting at is in an, ideolog in an ide ideological battle with... Uh, essentially capitalism uh, versus socialism uh, exactly, simplistic I, I, exactly right but i mean we're not going to get to that point are we we're not going to get the, the state is hell bent on putting itself at the center of the economy the state wants more control over i mean the mines minister this week has been talking about well we you know with all the mines that aren't working we're going to buy those 
Um, and maybe it'll be the best decision South Africa ever makes mm -hmm. because. Yeah. Um, yeah. But where's the money going to come from? Is mm -hmm. it going to maybe you can borrow it from Tina Juma Peterson's uh, nuclear budget? But she's already borrowed that from health, mm -hmm. and health's mm -hmm. already borrowed it from the students who want free education. So we are in a situation where we just don't have the money. So. Rightly so. I think government doesn't have that kind of money to invest in those kind of projects. That's quite So there's got to be clear. a give and take then, as Wayne suggests. I, I think we go to, to a meeting. To that extent. We sit around a table. We give. We take. And everybody comes to a, a new consensus. I think that's where the issue, the concept of an economic codessa comes in handy. It's quite important to, to get into it. And Saki, for that matter, has been advocating for that for some time. We are in a position where all the role players want to get together and economically and look at things from an econ economic perspective and make sure that it's a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. Until such time that happens, probably we need to get uh, to, to the rock bottom for us uh, to realize that it's imperative. Uh, yeah, why do we have to get to rock bottom? I once suggested it to Nick Benadel mm -hmm. uh, at Gibbs and mm -hmm. he looked at me as if I'd just sworn about his mother. <laughs> he was like, Nick, maybe things got to break before we can mm -hmm. fix them. And he went mm -hmm. like, no, mm -hmm. you can't. No, but look, I mean, you know, for, for 20 years, the government said it relatively easy. You know, initially, the, 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 the level of expectations you could deliver on because you're coming from such a low base. Now, that's not so easy anymore to deliver on that. And for eight years, maybe even ten years, we had a wonderfully positive commodity cycle. We had falling interest rates, which led to a major housing boom and credit boom. Life was actually good. In fact, life was so good. We ran out of electricity. Our economy was growing so quickly. But the last five, six, seven years has been tough. And I must stress, it's not the government's fault all in all. It's actually a downturn in the commodity cycle. So the government, I think, sometimes hasn't helped, but they're not the cause for it. A lot of people think, oh, the government's to blame for this. It's actually not. They, as I said, they don't seem to help, but it's not, they're not the cause. But maybe we do need a crisis to sort things out. And, you know... A crisis, you don't ever wish a crisis, but you can't control it, and maybe we actually need it, quite frankly. At that point, we will leave it. Certainly, the finance minister, Ntlantla Nene, was looking somewhat pensive at the medium-term budget policy statement today. I uh, chatted to Trevor Manuel about this about six months ago. I said to him, so how is the finance minister doing? Finance ministers don't comment about other finance ministers, because that leads to other finance ministers commenting about them. All he would say is, the big advantage that I, that's Trevor Manuel, and Pravin Gordon had was we used up all the luck. And Santa Lena has got no more luck, and that's coming through definitely in the way in which the South African budget has to be sliced and diced nowadays. That was the Saki president, Busi Kumalo, and Wayne McCurry from Momentum Wealth. South Africa needs to think of clever ways to make more money. Until then, uh, tomorrow at least, when we look at other ways to make money. Bye-bye. <laughs>